Welcome, everybody, to Post Game Takeaways with Inside Indy Sports. I'm Tyler James, back at the Sun Bowl Media Hotel. He's the one and only Eric Hansen. We cover Notre Dame football, recruiting, and more for InsideIndySports.com on the Rivals Network. And we're here to share our post game takeaways from Notre Dame's 40 to 8 victory over Oregon State in El Paso, Texas. Eric, the blowout didn't really take off until the second half, but it was pretty clear throughout that Notre Dame had a significant advantage in this one. What was your biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway from an X's and O's standpoint is um, the defense because you felt like Oregon State was going to be lucky to get into double digits. So um, the defense was going to hold Notre Dame in position to make a blowout sooner or later. But But beyond that, I thought what was really interesting to me was the dynamic of Nilka Mickey passing away and the team kind of rallying around him and him actually playing in a game hours after his mom passed away from colon cancer. And then just the cultural feel that this had, this didn't feel like a game where 20 guys opted out for various reasons. It felt like a continuation of what Notre Dame had done at its best points in the season and something to build on for the future. How's that yeah. for a triple takeaway? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the Mickey story is is heartbreaking and touching at the same time. I mean, we've been talking about it since earlier this season when he had an interception, and that's when we learned that um, his mother had gone hospice care and was, they were just trying to comfortably live out the rest of her life. Um, and the fact that it happened while he was away for the Sun Bowl – um, and Jaden still wanted to play, I think says a lot about him. Um, and I don't, you have to give it to the kid. Like I, I can't imagine trying to play under those circumstances. Um, but for him to come out and do that, this is what he wanted to do. Um, and probably what he felt his mom wanted him to do um, is a pretty special moment. And for the defense to just completely shut down Oregon state. Um, not that that was necessarily unexpected, but, um, to see it come together. And it's just a reminder of, hey, this this defense could be just as good, if not better, next season. There's so many of these pieces that are coming back next year. Um, there are some holes they need to fill, um, but a lot of the, those guys that are out there making plays today um, are going to be back next season. I think, quite honestly, Tyler, and, and right now they have moved up to sixth in the country in total defense based on today's Result. So they leapfrogged a couple teams, which would be the second highest finish since the last game of the or the last season of Era Parsegian, which was 1974, which wow. is incredible. So, um, but if Xavier Watts comes back and they get the right portal safety and they have health, you know, don't have any crazy health issues next year. I could see them being a top five defense and being good enough to let the offense kind of find its footing throughout the season. You know, I think this year they were good enough for Notre Dame to be a playoff team. The offense just wasn't good enough. I think mm -hmm. even if the offense isn't good enough at certain areas, and I don't expect that to be a, a long-term problem, but at the beginning of the season, I think this defense is good enough to kind of carry things until they grow into being a playoff offense or at least a good enough playoff offense. Yeah, I'm super impressed with the defense. And I realize Oregon State had opt-outs on their right. offense. They had three offensive linemen missing, an all-pac 12 running back. They were on their third string quarterback, but that quarterback's played a lot of football. Well, not this year, but – 2022 he started eight games and won seven of them including being the las vegas bowl mvp yeah and we've seen this defense be good so i don't think it, it was not like we're seeing one instance of it and now making a big deal out of it i think the flip side is that well now we saw steve angeli in his first career start and he looked pretty good 15 and 19 232 yards three touchdowns um it just feels like steve angeli is going to keep proving doubters wrong and i may have been in that doubter camp for quite some time and may still be there even just a little bit. I don't necessarily think he's beating out Riley Leonard next season, but 
He he looked very poised uh, today, outside of a few mistakes here or there, which should be expected in a, in a first career start. Um, but uh, I really like what he did back there. I really like the the command he played with the position and the way that Notre Dame used him. They didn't necessarily rely on him, but they knew that they could rely on him on third downs and he could make throws when they needed to. Um, and he was able to keep the offense moving a lot um, and uh, didn't have a lot of negative plays, so I think was a really important with a guy that was making his first career start. I think Notre Dame is in a really good spot with its quarterbacks, bringing in Riley Leonard, having Steve Angeli grow as much as he is. And then you've got two guys chasing Steve Angeli on the depth chart that are right. pretty talented. And then one waiting in the wings in Mississippi. I don't remember Notre Dame's quarterback room looking like this during the time that I've been in South Bend, potentially. Yeah, it's gonna. Um, they, they got to get to the start of the season that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but let's talk about Angeli today. Fourteen of eighteen, two hundred and twelve yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. He was sacked a couple times. That two thirty one point seven pass efficiency rating is just slightly better than the one Ron Paulus had in his nineteen ninety four start that caused Bino Cook to gush that this guy was going to win multiple Heisman's. There's only one other person that can match what Steve Angeli did today. Sam Hartman had the exact same pass efficiency rating in his debut. In the last 50 years, those are the best. Ron pa or um, Sam Hartman and in the Navy opener, and then Steve Angeli today in his his debut. A and he ran the ball well. He was fearless. He lowered his shoulder on one run. He lost the football when he hurtled on another, <laughs> but it was really fun to see him go all out. I mean, it was a game where you just said, had to say, wow, Steve Angeli, I, I take my hat off. Whatever happens to him, he's he's good enough to be somebody's starting quarterback. Yeah, and uh, I think he'll have a, a tough decision ahead in terms of what he wants to do um, and uh, certainly can respect what, what he does either way, because he's got to look out for himself first. Um, in addition to Steve Angeli on the offense, I thought it was another good reminder tonight that the future of the running back position is bright. Yeah. Um, Jadarian Price with 106 yards and one touchdown. Uh, Jer Jeremiah Love got the start and had more carries than Price, um, but he had a little bit of tougher go of it. But we've seen glimpses of what he can do already. Um, even Jabron Payne, I think, continues to maybe – outperform some expectations that we have for him. Uh, so I, I I think that running back position is continue to be, is going to continue to be strong, even if it maybe doesn't have uh, an Audric Estime at the top next season. But, I mean, there's no reason that Price or Love couldn't end up being just as good as Estime, right? I would agree. I, I mean, they're going to be good in a different way, but I think they could be absolutely right. – they could be a 1,000-yard type running backs – I'll tell you what, the sixth string running back looked pretty good. Chase Ketterer from uh, <laughs> kind of your neck of the woods. Uh, yeah, New, yeah. New Prairie uh, High School um, a touchdown with his six yard carry today. But yeah. Real quick, I don't, and I don't, I don't know if people knew this or, or caught this, but I, I noticed it as we were watching warmups. He was the emergency quarterback today. Like if, if Angeli and Kenny Minchie went down, Chase Ketterer, uh, who played some mostly run first quarterback at New Prairie High School uh, would have been the quarterback that Notre Dame turned to in, in case of emergency. And then it was kind of fitting that um, he ended up scoring the last touchdown for Notre Dame today. That is cool. And 236 rushing yards behind a makeshift offensive line. Notre Dame got over 200 rushing yards twice a season against power five defenses. One was the Stanford game in the last game of the season against a really bad Stanford defense. And then today against an Oregon State defense that was 15th in the country in rush defense. Granted, they had some opt-outs, but I think only one in their front seven, their whole defensive line was intact today, a defensive line that was ninth in sacks in the country uh, during the season. So Notre Dame's offensive line in this very small sample size was Pretty impressive to me, uh, given that I expected 
there to be lots of problems. <laughs> yeah. They, they what did Oregon up... State's offensive line had. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, Notre Dame did give up a couple sacks, and I thought Steve Angeli may, may have been able to help the offensive line out a little bit, even though I do think the offensive line failed him in those instances. I think he maybe just kept the ball a little bit too long. Um, and I think I think one thing it seemed like, at least today, that Steve Angeli really plays with a lot of confidence in the pocket and maybe too much confidence um, that it sometimes he needs to get out of there and not – uh, not be too comfortable. Um, so I, I think that's uh, something to work on. But, yeah, I, what is the future for Charles Jagusa and Tosh Baker? Are those Notre Dame's offensive tackles next season? I don't know that we know that for sure yet. I, I still think Notre Dame is going to consider continue to consider transfer portal tackle options if um, ones they like come into the portal. Um, but I, I you, you can see what they like with Charles Jagusa. Um, at that uh, left tackle position. I don't know if he's the ideal starter at left tackle next year for you, but definitely looks like a, a tackle of, for, of, for the future. Can Tosh Baker hold up for a whole season? I don't know. I'm a little bit leery of that, um, but I think we'll 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 see how those guys progress this offseason um, and put themselves in a position to potentially be those starting guys next year. Yeah, I wouldn't count out a Neil Wagner if he can make friends with sure. a new strength and conditioning coach and get up to 300 pounds. He could be right there with those guys. Yeah, and Lauren Landau was at the game today. Um, saw him pregame chatting up with Sam Hartman a little bit. Um, and I know uh, some guys were able to to catch up with him as he will start to get integrated in, with the program in January. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the offense lastly was, was that Jaden Thomas was – he was the missing piece to the offense that I think many of us thought he was going to be going into the season. Um, just a real comfort target for Steve Angeli today. Four catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. It, it seemed like Angeli knew where he was going to be when he needed a big catch. Other than going to Jordan Faison, he knew he could go to Jaden Thomas for that. Um, and I think that is something that will be a what if that we'll never really know what this offense would have looked like if Jaden Thomas was healthy. healthy for the entire 2023 season. Yeah, Jordan Faison ends up being the MVP, and somebody asked Marcus if he was kicking himself for not mm -hmm. involving him earlier. I don't I don't know that he would have helped them earlier. You know, they had the offense rolling early, early in the season. Jordan right. Faison started kind of coming into play when they were having some of their issues with the loaded box. Mm -hmm. um, but certainly... I think they made a very good decision to activate him at midseason and yeah. let him play out the rest of the season. And it'll be fun to see where he ends up next year in a what we think will be a deeper wide receiver rotation. Well, all right, Eric, I don't have any other takeaways. Anything else you want to mention before we get out of here? The snuff block punt, even the special teams got into it. Yep. Somehow – the kicker gets the special teams trophy. I think Josh Burnham should have gotten it for uh, stopping the fake punt. Yeah, let the record show that I, as of we, they pulled us in the in the press box, and I voted for Josh Burnham, and I, I voted Michael Benson second. I didn't think Spencer Schrader should win it on a day where he missed a field goal, but <laughs> exactly. Um, I'm I'm, gu I'm guessing there's a lot of people that didn't know many of Notre Dame's special teamers other than the field goal kicker that were in the press box. Um, and not necessarily the Notre Dame reporters, but uh, other folks that are covering Notre Dame for the first time. Maybe it was be a, a bit harder for them to reach for for a name there, so they went with with the kicker. But um, yeah, it sort of just like encapsulates Spencer Strader's season. Like, there's the good moments, and there's like, oh man, what could it be if he was just like that much more accurate? Because he he certainly has the leg for it. Um, but hey, he gets to end his Notre Dame career with a trophy, which not everyone can say that. Okay, one last big picture question for you, Tyler. Okay. I, I talk a lot about my expectations for this bowl game is you can get impressions. I don't think you're going to get conclusions from a game like this. Right. But did today's game change in any way the way you feel about 2024? Um, I don't I don't think so. I, I think a lot of the things that have happened over the last three weeks, three or four weeks have changed yeah. maybe what I think of 2024 with the transfer portal additions, the hiring of offensive coordinator, Mike Dembrock. Um, I think those things will have probably a bigger, at least in my mind, will have a bigger impact on next season than what this bowl game will. 
Um, but I think it's just another it's another thing to build momentum off of. I it yeah. would have like I think Notre Dame could over could have overcome a loss to Oregon State in this bowl game, but now they don't have to. They can just keep things rolling, keep the positive momentum going, get see if there's any more transfer portal visits that they can pull out here um, in the first week of January for um, any mid year additions, and then sort of reset get. Get your guys ready in the off season with Lauren Landau taking over the strength program in January, um, and then build towards the spring and start moving forward. Agreed. All right, I think All that's right. it. Uh, do we need to promote our thirty day free trial at the bottom of the screen? Did we forget uh, to do that? No, I got you. I got us covered. Make sure you check out uh, the rest of our post game coverage on InsideNDSports dot com. Um, if you're not a subscriber to the site, you can use the promo code NDYT to sign up for a 30 day free trial. There's a link to that deal in the video description below. Um, and with the college football playoff semifinals on Monday, we've decided to move football never sleeps to Tuesday night. Once again, this coming week. Um, so we'll see you back here then. Hope everyone has a great weekend and happy new year.